fans, it's that time again for Burt Wojcik, Justin Snyder, and Earl Hoon Jr. to bring you all the latest news in the spring car world right here on BA Spring Car Live. Good evening, everybody. Earl Hoon Jr. here with Justin Snyder, Burt Wojcik. Welcome to PA Sprint Car Live right here on Bear Hill Gang TV. Uh, thank you, everybody, for allowing us to kick off your World of Outlaw weekend. Oh, man, Justin, I mean, so much chatter on Facebook. I mean, about selling T-shirts, a lot of trash talk. Man, the Summer Nationals presented by Champion Racing, uh, Championship Racing Oil at Williams Grove is going to be a good one. Yeah, I, I may or may not have had it. A, a role in that but that's okay um no it's 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 a good week it's every, anytime the outlaws come to town we're excited um you know i know it's, it's a friendly rivalry and people get anxious about it they get talking and it's it's fun it's time to it's it's nice to poke the bear every now and then and see what happens i guess um <laughs> but um no i it's it's gonna be interesting it's uh you know we, we got some nice storylines coming in that you know they frankly they whipped their ass last time they were here they uh, sure did they, they got us every night and it wasn't even close so Hopefully, um, you know, we got some cars that are getting hot at the right time, and we'll see if they can take home the cash. I mean, like Justin said, the world of outlaws just creamed us last time they were in. Boy, that was ugly, wasn't it? It was bad. But, hey, you know what? I think this past weekend showed a couple guys had some speed. They might be contenders, but it all starts tomorrow night with time trials. That's where they've been – it seems like they've been having some problems struggling time trials because with this format and the way the grow's been this year – Passing's had a premium, so if you don't time well, you're in trouble from the start, Earl. You sure are. It is all about time trials. Uh, that's what all the drivers say. And truly, with the format, it all does come back to qualifying. Well, race fans, once again, welcome to PA Sprint Car Live. We have a great lineup of drivers. I think this is the first show so far this season where we have three drivers on. Of course, Mike Wagner, he was uh, he's going to be the big man on stage next week for the Living Legends Dream Race up at Port Royal Speedway. We also have Sheldon Hoddenshout, hot young rookie coming up in the world of outlaws. I mean, what a heartbreaker, you know, at the uh, Don Martin Silver Cup this past week at Lernerville for him. And, of course, Darren Pittman, he's going to join us right here on the show later on. Uh, but, however, as tradition here we did have racing last week and we'll start off at the speed palace port roll speedway and maybe he's testing and tuning for either to this weekend or next weekend but shocker lance deweese takes home the win yeah that, that team's you know they had a bit of a it's tough to call it a rough stretch because they've been so dominant and um you know they started out the year they were dominant they went in a little bit of a a lull there where you weren't sure maybe you know maybe the magic has started to fade but it hasn't it's still there they're um they're, or as, they're as good as go ever fishing. they don't know <laughs> you don't know they're as good as they've ever been and um i think the one thing i like to see there with that is um you know greg hodnett uh great time you know they got this they yep. switched over they went from triple x to maximum and it seems like it's been a beneficiary to them ever since then um it's just tough when you've got guys like Lucas Wolf who finished third at Port yeah. and Lance Deweese who've been so dominant, and then you got Dylan Sisney who's really kind of been almost the storybook story this year. You know, he's he, I think he's leading the points out of Port yeah. Royal. He's been very very good. He got a win out of Lernerville. and uh, Blaine Heinbach who has resurfaced uh, after a little bit of a delay to start the season. And he won a race and he's been fast every time out since then too. So. It's not, it's not easy to win when you're at Port Royal this year. No, it is not, and they got real good competition. Obviously, the track has been real racy. Then we go down to the Pigeon Hills at Lincoln Speedway, and this man, from what I saw, uh, he set the track on fire. He won uh, by a straightaway. Glendon Forsyth takes home the win. Good win for that team. You know, they've been strong down there. Lincoln's been this year, you know, it seems like it would be feats of famine. You could be have a lot of passion, or else the winner comes from the front row. But still, hats off to Glennon Forsythe this, uh, for this win here. And second place, Steve Owens. I mean, those are two guys you don't really see 
that far up in the front there. You know, Forsythe's normally good for a win there, but Steve Owens, hats off to him and that entire 35 team. Absolutely. Uh, Glenn Forsythe, Steve Owens, Brian Monteith, Corey Haas, and Danny Dietrich rounded out the top five. By the way, Brian Monteith from 11th again. Nice, nice. But still, he uh, he's coming from deep in the field, but he has yet to capitalize. It is a very slow season for the number 21 team. It is, and really, in all honesty, if they're going to turn around, they got to turn it around now. We're halfway through the season, and they only have one win, that Premier uh, Auto Works number 21 team. When was the last time they only had one win this late in the season? <laughs> I, I know. And obviously the Kings Royal was last weekend. Uh, the winner of the big night, the Kings Royal, shocker, Donnie Schatz takes home the win. It is the month of money. This is when the TSR number 15 team shines. He also got the win at uh, the Lernerville Speedway this past Tuesday. I tell you what, it was a wild Kings Royal. Um, you got to give it, you know, hats off to uh, Eldora Speedway for getting in that thing in. And there was a lot of rain out there. Um, and they pushed and they pushed and they pushed. And not only did they push, but they gave the fans a great track. I mean, we saw Ryan Smith come from 24th Fourth. to 5th. We saw Christopher Bell come from 19th, 19th to 2nd. Um, we saw Christopher Bell win the night before. There was a ton of passing, a ton of great racing. And um, but once again, Donnie Schatz, you know, when it matters, is the man. Absolutely. And hats off to Tony Stewart and the gang out at the Eldor Speedway. Uh, I took Andy out there for the very first time, and he had a blast. And... They don't let any storm or any rain uh, put a damper on the night. I mean, it rained for a good two, two and a half hours on Thursday night, right around where they were getting cars on the track. Uh, they have all the tractors that you could think of. They have the best uh, track prep equipment there at the high bank half mile, and, and they waited till the rain stopped. They got the tractors out. They got the famous Ward of Atwell push trucks on the track, and uh, we had warm-ups in by 1030, and the show was over by midnight. Actually, one o'clock. Well, and I, was feature, it? Feature came out at one o'clock at least. And I tell on you, that was, I was it, on vacation. It, was, I figured it, it wasn't care. just Eldora either. The Brad Doty Classic, correct, rain again, yeah. and they yeah. persevered through and put on another great show. I mean, that whole week, you know, I can't say enough about those Ohio racetracks. And know, that we, was a big win by they, David um, Gravel, by David the way, Gravel, picking up you know, that. Got the win, and um, it's just. Um, Man, uh, you got to hand it to the guys out there in Ohio for getting in these shows. Uh, big purses. They're big races. Uh, we had Brad Doty on here earlier in the season. I know he's looking forward to that all season. Yeah. And for that to go off like it did and be successful, uh, I think that's really awesome. How about the winner of that Joker's Wild race, anyways? Uh, Kerry Madsen actually hurt his hand in the race, had to go and get stitches. Yeah, yep, yeah. yep. Came back to persevere and win $10,000 on the Joker's Wild Night. I tell you what, he was in pain. Uh, he got out of the car. He held his hand uh, right away. They went to go get an interview with him, and uh, he just had to take a couple seconds, gather himself because he was in a, little, a lot of pain. Obviously, everybody saw the pictures yeah. later on in the evening or in the morning, and, uh, yeah, they uh, sutured him up right there in the infield care center. By the way, that's the only dirt track that has its own infield <laughs> care center. By the way, which is awesome, but he he got it back up and uh, he got back underway, which is always good to see. Oh, always, always, and but still, I mean, great weekend and it, back to Thursday night though. I mean, that wasn't your typical door track. Normally that thing slicks off. That was heavy as all hell. So really, I think you know, passion was at a premium that night. But then the next night for the uh, night before, Christopher Bell, man, what a run for him. He's a god. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, Chris Bell. You, I mean, did you watch what he did last night in the truck? Oh, with that was no awesome. Front end? I mean, yeah, the, the yeah. kid came. He he went into the with a flat tire with twenty two to go and was up to eleventh in three laps. Cra yeah, I mean, I, crazy. It, just the kid is so talented, and um, you know, brief mention. It's not the outlaws. It's not the PA posse. But that truck race, wow. Um, I was giving them a lot of flack, really, saying about how that thing has always followed the leader, and the only reason why it's exciting is because they're banging off each other because nobody <laughs> could pass anybody. And I tell you what, that was a, a really good show. I enjoyed the feature, and it, that just Tony Stewart. Uh, if he never does anything again the rest of his life, I mean. What he's doing at Eldora is phenomenal. Yeah, it's great. Uh, speaking of Tony, he's going to be in Western PA uh, coming up. I think this weekend, actually, yes. he'll be out there With running the arts, all sorts. Oh, cars. But once they get rained out in Western PA, then he'll oh, probably ooh. be in here in Central PA for this weekend where it's not going to rain, by you the know, way. You know, back to the truck race here. I find it funny. They were they showed that wreck there with uh, Christopher Bell last night. They're like, oh, the truck's done. You know, he's not going to be able to come back out. 
came back out for a top ten. Listen. Like, these announcers don't know anything. Listen, it's all about going on to the bottom of the track and getting mud on the tires, according to moist, a certain... The moist dirt. Yeah, the, the moist dirt. And, and according to... And Michael Waltrip, too, having to, you know, the track... He just named know, dropped. Up. I'm trying not to drop a name. And and he about, just dropped. I'm sorry. I, I tell you what, and my, know, favorite, but... my favorite, Todd Bodine saying Chase Briscoe <laughs> had ran 410 sprint car races. Whatever. I mean, <laughs> Brad, Brad Doty, if you're watching, please get your name out there for next year. Absolutely. Agreed. Uh, and then also, the final race of last weekend, all eyes were at Susquehanna Speedway. The race of the year so far. Before we get into this, hats off to Colt Gauska, Go Brecht, and the entire promotional team and staff at Susquehanna Speedway. The track was in pristine condition. Now, I always wanted this to be done here in Central PA. This is the first track, uh, as long as I've been alive, that been known to do it. They ran the support division first. Okay, I agree with this decision. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's okay to do that when the track is real heavy. All right, why don't we widen out instead of bringing out uh, machines or water trucks and dampen it down? Why don't we just run a feature and the cushion will move up naturally, and it's going to make the racing the racing a lot better because it proved it. Sunday night with Lucas Wolf taking home the win. On the plus side of that, too, if they would have ran the four tens first, that would have been a daylight feature. <laughs> An all, that would have been all daylight, to be honest with you, because the track probably would have rubbered up then, went right to the bottom. But still, hats off to them, going out there, letting the super sportsmen go out run first. But boy, and that was a great race, too. Oh, Kenny, uh, Kenny Edkins, Edkins going yeah. from 11th? Yeah. Well, and there was, I think there were guys coming from the back of the pack. I think Absolutely. I heard over the radio there was, I forget who finished six, but he had like his six. Uh, hard charge award of the year. Like, l ladies and gentlemen, if you have nothing to do on Saturday night, you don't want to go to Lincoln or Port Royal, go to Susquehanna because the racing on Saturday night there has been top notch from what we've been hearing. And, another, and a guy who put on a great, uh, he has had a great run. He had a really good PSB week. He seems to be coming into his own here towards the end of the season. Uh, Brock Searfoss mm -hmm. finished third. He was consistently, he was moving. He was consistently probably all PSB week, a top yep. three, four car. Yeah. Um, if it wouldn't have been for the dominance of a couple other guys, we may have seen him in victory lane. Right. But um, hats off to them, and I, I'm interested to see. I mean, that uh, that 58 team that they put together for Williams Grove has gotten stronger and stronger each week. Um, I mean, obviously, it's going to be tough to knock off the outlaws, but I'll be interested to see what they can do this weekend. But like uh, we said, you know, he's good in time trials. Yeah. So depending on how the track goes uh, tomorrow on Saturday night, he could set down a good lap and make the invert, and he's set for the night. Had a third, I believe, second or third in the Mitch, I think it was. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, they're finally getting some go something going with that 58 car, but still. Lucas Wolf, Greg Hahn, it. what about that became there? And I texted you, and I said <laughs> once that stuff went down, nobody's touching Hahn it because I didn't think Wolf had enough for him. And what did I tell you? I said it's not, not over. With yeah. that yellow coming out, it was a great race. They got back into lap traffic. Unfortunately, uh, lap traffic didn't get out of the way, and it was on from there. Obviously, uh, everybody knows what I'm talking about. Danny Dietrich was coming up through the field. I don't know if he was going to win. The car was really fast, and he was getting it done. Obviously, uh, lap car, unfortunately, ruined his chances for Danny Dietrich. But Wolf did take home the win over Greg Hotnet, Brock Zerifoss, Brian Monteith, and Tyler Walker. There's a name we haven't talked a whole lot about uh, finishing in the top five or top ten. Yeah, you know, I talked to his people there out of Seals Grove um, at the end of PSP week, and honestly, Tyler was a little down on himself. He was, uh, you know, wondering if he still had it. He, honestly, yeah. he was just saying, man, I think he, you know, Tyler's had such success, and he's so been so fast his whole career. I think he expected to come in here and, I don't want to say win races, but he expected to be really well. He had, they had a really rough PSP week. They wrecked a lot of cars. Um, you can but see he's been out They of shook the, the rust off, though, right. I think. absolutely. Um, the equipment's obviously there. The speed's there. And I don't doubt for a second the talent's still there. So we'll see, you know. Uh, it's time to show your cards, you know. Absolutely. And the races are here, and we'll see what he's got. Month of money is here. We are officially halfway through the Central PA racing season. Speaking of Tyler Walker, this is a good weekend for him. Not only did he get a top five Susquehanna, but a, a sixth place finish at Port Royal. Right. That really, I think, might turn the turn the corner for that Soro Cash number 35 team. Absolutely. Definitely a confidence booster. Well, ladies and gentlemen, once again, welcome to PA Sprint Car Live right here on Burr Hill Gang TV. Up next, we've got the 2017 Dream Race honoree, Mike Wagner. Hi. My name is Tyler Altmaier, and I am the owner and founder of Fully Injected Motorsports and FullyInjected.com, a professional short track PR firm that has been in operation since 2010. 
headquartered in western Pennsylvania, Fully Injected Motorsports focuses primarily on providing professional grade press to motorsports teams, racetracks, and organizations all throughout the country, keeping your fans and other racing enthusiasts up to date with breaking news, event schedules, and recent race results. Our original content and mass distribution service is sure to keep your sponsors as well as your team's biggest supporters in the loop and on track. For more information, contact us today at FullyInjected.com. Now, back to PA Sprint Car Live on Beer Hill Gang TV. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. On the phone right now is the obviously the Dream Race honoree for next week up at Port Royal Speedway. He also has two track championships up at the Speed Palace back in 1991 and 2011. Mike Wagner joins us. Mike, thank you for taking some time out of your busy night and joining us right here. Yeah, it's, uh, it'd be an honor for me that they honored uh, myself. Which, um, there's a lot of other, you know, good drivers out there that, um, and, you know, did a lot for the Speedway. But, yeah, I'm really honored that uh, Poor Road did something like that for me. Absolutely. Mike, I mean, uh, what's this weekend uh, looking like for you? Obviously, uh, Port Royal is not going to run the sprints at all, so you're just going to hang around the house, relax, uh, soak it all in until next weekend comes? Probably just stay around here and... Maybe do a little work on my car Saturday. Now, you've had quite this distinguished career, and, um, you know, you, you've had a bit of a, I don't want to say a rough season, but, you know, what what would you consider the season like so far? I know um, you guys have been running Port Royal for the most part, and, um, you know, you haven't seen Victory Lane yet, but how do you feel about 2017 so far? Yeah, it's been not, not real good for us. We've been half-decent sometimes, but a little off, you know, more than not, and, um, I think we're finding some stuff to get going a little quicker. We just had a couple, you know, some problems and stuff, but we'll keep working at it. Well, Mike, I mean, it seems like uh, you guys have been, you know, as you say, struggling, but Logan and them have really been catching on strong this year, you know, picking up a couple wins there. Um, how proud is it to see that your uh, son is doing as well as he is so far this year? Yeah, I'm, I'm proud. I mean, he's doing, been doing really, really well. You know, he had four wins and an all-star win up at, um, Turnerville. And, um, he's been, he's been really good, especially on the shorter track. Some of the longer tracks hasn't been quite as good, but he's been working at that too. So, yeah, I enjoy working with him and seeing him win. You know, he works hard at it too. Absolutely. Uh, you know, Mike, Port Royal Speedway, man, what a, 180 that track has turned over the last couple of years with Steve O'Neill taking over and and what are your thoughts about that track and where you know you've been there for a very long time and, and what are your thoughts about their improvements that they've been making since the new promotional team? Yeah, I mean it's really unbelievable. Um, you know, look back 20 years ago and see where they were, and even say 10 years ago, and they've um, they did so many improvements for the track surface and the whole facility and you know right now i think it's probably one of the best tracks in the country right now i i, I most definitely agree with that yeah it's it's been phenomenal and i know um you know you guys in the past couple years you know at the end of the year you put that you guys have put that deal together where logan's taking your car out to knoxville um i know he talked about maybe doing it again this year you know are you guys going to go back out and do that again this year or you know what's the plan for you guys yeah, well, right now I don't think we're going. We would we had planned on going, and then um, you know, just uh, didn't didn't really come up with the funds that we really needed. And I was I was going to actually drive it this year, so you know, maybe we'll try for next year. Yeah, we all we enjoy going out there and doing that. I, I mean, I love to get a Wagner back out to Knoxville. Oh, that'd be awesome, man. Logan, I think it was close to getting the. Uh, yeah, ho hopefully it'll happen here. <laughs> Maybe probably next year, hopefully. Nice. Awesome. Well, well, hopefully there's some people listening here, and maybe they'll uh, give you a call. <laughs> maybe him. Maybe get out there. <laughs> yeah. Now, Mike, uh, you know, as you it takes a lot of work, too. Yeah. Now, you're being honored by Port Royal coming up here next weekend for the Living Legends Dream Race. What's that mean to you to be honored by this, uh, being a living legend up there at Port Royal? Um, I, can't, I can't hardly hear you right now. Can you hear me now, Mike? Yes, I can hear you fine. Okay, I don't even know what's going on here. So, what would you say now? <laughs> Great, Mike. Uh, you know, Andy goes upstairs. Everything goes to hell. So, um, Mike, we um, 
you're being honored by Port Royal next weekend as a living leg for Living Legends Dream Race. Um, what's that mean to you to be honored by Port Royal as a living legend? Um, well, I never really thought about it a lot till they, you know, went and did it, and um, yeah, I guess um, I, I do feel honored, you know, that they're doing that for me. It uh, it's just something I never really, I never really thought of it before, you know. It just something just happened, and um, I'm really grateful for all the people up there that you know considered me in doing something like that. Uh, so I think it's pretty neat. Well, you know, you have. I mean, obviously, to to be honored as a living legend, you you've obviously been doing because you went out on the tour there for a bit. Um, you know, what is how, what's the biggest difference for you? I mean, year after year, what keeps you coming back and racing year after year? Well, I don't really know. I guess I just must like it too much. <laughs> I probably probably shouldn't be doing it, but um, I've been like that, you know, my whole life. I I work hard in my body shop to, you know, to make money and then uh, spend it all on race cars. I sort of did all my life. So I really don't know a lot of, you know, nothing else really, to tell you the truth. Now, you know, we're talking about Port Royal here, Mike, and, and the big one, we're all talking about the test score of 50 this year, paying $50,000 to win. What are your thoughts on that? And and you've been around for a while, and how do you feel going into this race? Obviously, you got to get past next weekend, but still, that's a big race. That's it on everybody's list this year. Yeah, I think that's great that they're, you know, putting a race up, paying that kind of money. Um, let's say, you know, they showed us pretty, pretty nice track, and I'm sure they've got some help with sponsors and stuff being a big event. And um, I think it's their, and if they're 50th, that's the 50 up there. And, uh, you know, maybe we can win that. We're going to try to work hard, and uh, it'd be good to win that. Well, you, you so that's what we're going to try and do. You, you pick up a few of these big races coming up, and you, you won't have to worry about getting the funds to go to Knoxville. <laughs> I think you'll have them, but yeah, that would that would sure help. <laughs> uh, Mike, we do have a question here. We'll just have to get going better. <laughs> we do have a, a question here in the fully injected mo uh, motorsports fan zone. Ellen Wagner asks, "How much does your wife or how much does your wife help out for the team, or what does she do for the team?" Well, she's a cleaner. She <laughs> she cleans the truck and the trailers, and she mops them, wipes the walls down, and you know, reds everything up. And she washes our suits and uh, you know the underwear. And last week, I told her, uh, I said, you know, you clean everything so good, but I said, you never clean the helmet. <laughs> she cleaned the helmet last week, so I'm sure she'll start doing that because I'm mostly there cleaning from one week to the next. I just wipe it off enough I can see through the lens. <laughs> but um, yeah, she she sells. She sells T-shirts, and yeah, she keeps uh, she keeps this all going. And she does, actually does a lot of work behind the scenes. She does, and, and uh, I mean, I talk to her when I sell shirts up there, and she's definitely a great woman. Uh, I will say this, a great ambassador of the sport, you know. Uh, Mike used to be a regular out at Port Royal, at, or down at uh, Williams Grove back in the day. Obviously, he got that win uh, in the Walt Dyer 461 when Lance left the ride, and, and Mr. Walt Dyer hired Mike there, and it was a big win for the Wagner family. And, uh, I mean, you can see Ellen all the way from Bear Hill. Jumping up and down, having a good time, and I also been at Port Royal where uh, Ellen's also getting in fights because she's standing up for the family, which is always good to see. And and she's definitely a great woman, a great person to talk to. Uh, I'm sure she'll be up at Port Royal next weekend selling shirts. So make sure you get a Mike uh, Wagner and Wagner Family Racing T-shirt. Now, Mike, you know, how, what does the rest of the season look like for you? Uh, is it just going to stay at Port Royal mainly, or do you maybe going to go to the Grove for a couple of their, you know, Yellow Breaches 500 race, or ultimately, you know, maybe this weekend or the National Open? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm not sure right now. I'd like to, I'd like to go to some other tracks and race. We'll just have to see how, how things are going. If we can make a little bit of money, you know, I'd like to, you know, run some other races. I'd like to actually travel around, and run some other tracks. I, I enjoy that. I now like you get different places, and you know, right? And, and you've been known to yeah, travel. I'm with the All Stars and stuff. Yeah. Absolutely, you've been known to travel. You've been uh, you ran with the All Stars uh, for the year uh, a year or two uh, back in the early 2000s. Definitely always great to see that. And how was that? You know, let's talk a little bit about back in the day when you ran the All Stars. You know, what made you make the decision to go travel throughout the country with the All Star Circuit of Champions? 
Yeah, I'm not sure. We just um, got through the one year, and uh, there was a guy that um, we had a sponsor that was going to pay for our motel rooms for the season. So I thought, heck, you know, we'll just uh, do the All Star deal. So that's that's what we did, and um, I had a lot of help at the time. There was a uh, probably like three of my guys worked at JLG Industries, and they got a bunch of them were laid off at that time. So the whole summer, I had had plenty of help, and um, you know. If you were in the top ten in points, they paid decent tow money, and you know, paid even thousands to run tents. So, you know, if we was in the top ten, we was guaranteed at least twelve hundred bucks. Plus, you know, finished up better, you're getting more money. So, um, we actually made as much money or more doing that than we did, um, you know, back here. Plus, we had a sponsor that paid for a lot of our diesel fuel too at the time. So that really helped out. And we don't have uh, not quite that lucky now, but um. In the second year I run, the uh, guys would all call back to work, and uh, I had to take take my son out of school and take a guy that worked for me, and we had to go out on the road a couple times like that, so it wasn't, wasn't quite as profitable, but we still enjoyed it. Nice. And it's, it's obvious, you know, it's no secret, racing is a family thing for you guys, and I'm sure that's got to be... That's got to be part of what keeps you coming back. I mean, you've got your wife selling shirts, you've got your boys, they both race, um, you know... Uh, Mike Jr. hasn't raced as much this year, but it's just got to be a real cool thing. I mean, for me, it's racing has always been a thing I did with my dad, and um, I think that's got to that's got to be really cool for you to know that you know the family name is in good hands, and you know every weekend you guys are going to get together and see each other, and you still got that bonding time. Yep. Yeah, we get. Um, yeah, I enjoy working with the boys. Now, when I'm at the track racing myself, it's uh, you know we're pretty busy. I don't really get to get to really help them out too much, you know, as far as setups or anything. But if I'm not racing and I'm there, then I, you know, I have a hands-on thing. I can watch your cars and try to, you know, try to help out and see what's going on there. But I'm racing myself. It's too, we're just too busy. We don't really, um, yeah, we can't even, don't even talk to each other a lot, you know, maybe just a little bit here and there. And same way at the shop or, you know, the day before we leave, we're always busy working on cars and they're on one side and I'm on the other. So I don't really... You don't really see them a lot, except for every time they come over and take stuff from my side. <laughs> so, Mike, um, as you said before, you are being honored here for the Port Royal of Legends Dream Race coming up next weekend. Is there a memory that you that sticks out in your mind that you um, remember? It's probably one of your favorites. Uh, yeah, I don't. You know, I don't really really know for sure. Maybe my first win at Port Royal might be uh, any any of the wins. I enjoyed, and um, I remember one time when I first started racing. I was I started up front and I I, I spun out or got sideways or something and took like five cars in a row. <laughs> I don't remember that, like my first or second year racing up there. I guess when you've been doing it as long as you have, you know, uh, the wins and the top fives and stuff, they kind of start to run together. I know. Uh, and by the way, Logan is watching here, and he wants you to know that. Let's go all star racing again. So apparently, um, you guys got some plans next year. But uh, <laughs> um, um, before we let you go here, bud, we'll um, we'll get this wrapped up. I know you're probably busy, and we've got you know some other guests to come on here. But who's responsible for getting you guys in and out of the track each week? You know, who do you have to thank sponsor wise for making all this happen for you over the years? Yeah, well, John Hart from. Um he had a, our brother's furniture and appliance, and then he retired, but he's really been coming on board this year and helping me a lot. And he even comes out to the shop sometimes one or two days a week and helps work on the race car, and he enjoys it. And he's been helping a lot this year. And um, Percy's Racing Engines has helped me oh, probably from the, like, the second year of a race, and um, he helps me out a lot. If it wouldn't be for him, I wouldn't even be able to race because the price of the motors and stuff like that. He, um, you know, he really helps me out a lot there. And um, we have a Clugston Lumber Company that's helped us, you know, for years. And um, Pine Tree Trophy Whitetail and um, Freedom Power Sports helps us out some. And there's been um, um, CMB Chubby, he helped us some there the other year. I've had a lot of, um, you know, a lot of people that's helped me out over the, over the years. And like I said, this year, Percy's and Hot Brothers um, have did the most. And then... Um, you know, my family, my mom and my dad. My dad, he comes up and works on, he works on race cars about three or four days a week. So I can work in the shop to try to make money. So 
but he's really a big help, and he works on both the boys' cars too. Very good. Mike, thank you for coming on the show. We're going to let you get back to enjoying your evening. Good luck next week, and I'll make sure we'll catch up with you uh, because you are the honoree for the Living Legends Dream Trades, by the way. Congrats on that, and we'll make sure we'll catch up and do an interview with you. Hey, thanks a lot. Good talking to you guys. Yep. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Let's give Mike Wagner a thumbs okay. up here, race fans. Uh, thank you, Mike, for taking some time out of your uh, busy work schedule and joining us right here. That's pretty cool. You know, uh, 30 years of racing, two-time Port Royal track champion. I mean, and the family has been involved with Port Royal and racing, you know, forever, it seems like. So really cool to see them getting a nod here. So, uh, I guess, I don't know if you want to call them some of the little guys are racing because, you know, Logan's really making a name for himself. But Mike has been around for so long, but yet they're not the mainstream like the Weiss or Raymer. So it's really cool to see them get the honoree. Absolutely. And Mike, you know, when he was back in the early 90s, he wasn't a high-dollar team. Like, there were some back, but he managed to get up and down the road to each and every dirt track every weekend. Yeah, you know, that's just – that's. It's going to be strange today that that 55's not out there anymore because, um, you know, that's, you know, I'm 29 years old. That's my whole life. Yeah. <laughs> and Mike Wagner's racing. And I know. Black number 55. And um, um, it, it's really cool, like you said. You know, it's nice to see um, a good family getting some notoriety. You know, these last couple of years, it's, you know, it's, it's really neat of them because when you hear Living Legend and you think Port Royal, I mean, they already did Keith Kaufman. They've right. done Lynn Paxton. They've. Uh, the Zemco team, John and Pee Wee last Louise. year. Lance, I mean, these big names, but it, you, you look at it and you go, holy shit, man. Mike Wagner won two track championships. He is just, I mean, he is just as much a part of that track's history as anybody. So it's really cool. Uh, you know, I, obviously, I know he's a quiet guy. He's not very talkative, and he doesn't like to boast in his accomplishments. But um, I think he's going to enjoy this one, and um, I think it's going to be a big day for the whole family. I, I agree. He's one of those uh, so racing dude to talking for him. Absolutely. Well, where he stands, that was Mike Wagner. Next up, we're going to have the son of the wild child, Sheldon Hanschild. Good evening, race fans. Derek Snyder here from Pace Performance. Pace Performance is your complete source for all of your automotive needs. The nation's leading retailer of Chevy Performance Parts is also home to thousands of aftermarket performance parts, regardless of your vehicle's manufacturer. Visit PacePerformance.com to shop 24-7 and see the largest selection at one convenient location. And thank you for tuning in to Beer Hill Gang TV. We're back, ladies and gentlemen, trying to get a hold of Sheldon Hottenshaw here and and real quick, uh, looks like we made contact with him. Man, he was about five laps away from winning the biggest race in his career, the Don Martin Memorial, this past Tuesday. I tell you what, uh, he's, he's close. It's going to happen soon. And when it happens, I think it's going to come in bunches. <laughs> sure is. Well, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, welcome the son of the wild child, Sheldon Hottenchild, joins us right here on Beer Hill Gang TV. Sheldon, thank you for taking some time, bud. Yeah, thanks for having me. Dude, real quick, let's just knock this out of the way. One, are you okay, and how are you feeling after your hard flip at Lernerville? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, uh, all good. So I uh, just uh, had to do some repairs to the car, but got everything back ready for uh, Williams Grove this weekend. Now, you know, we're going to get into this. You know, you, you made the jump this year. You went from the All-Stars. You won a ton of races last year. I mean, you had a breakout season, honestly, and everybody everybody knows who you are just because of your last name alone. But we talked to Brad Doty earlier in the year, and he told us a little bit about this this deal and this operation. And a lot of the, I mean, this is your money, this is your deal. How's the uh, the rookie season been for you, traveling up and down with the World of Outlaws? <laughs> it's been really good and a lot of fun. So, um, you know, it's definitely challenging, but uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. That's for sure. Hey, Sprint Carla, we have Sheldon Hottenchild joining us, up-and-comer, uh, standout with the World of Outlaws this season. Well, Sheldon, you are uh, in the thick of the uh, World of Outlaws Craft Sprint Car uh, Rookie of the Year contender for the Kevin Goldbrick uh, Rookie of the Year here. Um, you know, seven top fives and 22 top tens. I mean, that's pretty successful so far for a rookie season. Yeah, I'm happy with the, how the first half has gone. And, um, you know, we've had some podiums and, and we've been right there to win a couple. Just uh, haven't finished off one of these features yet. But um, you know, I know my team's capable, and uh, I know I'm capable. I just got to do it. I know you're capable, and the whole team is. But you are knocking on the door to get your first ever Word of Outlaw Craftsman Sprint Car win this season. Obviously, you have a hell of a mechanic on your side, Bonsai Dean Bruns. He's helping you. And and how much? I mean. 
How much has he helped you, you know, on and off the track with the tour this season? Uh, it, he's huge, you know. Uh, I, I definitely wouldn't be here without Bonsai right now. And, um, you know, he's proven that uh, since the first race weekend uh, with me. I think we won uh, two races right in a row. Uh, the first two races he helped me. So um, to be on the road is even bigger for us uh, to have a guy with experience and, and stuff like that. So um, definitely a lot of help. Now, when I when I watch you out at the track every week, I would be lying if I didn't say multiple times this year. I said, "Man, that that kid is every bit his dad." Just you, you watch you drive, and I mean, you your dad gained that reputation, the wild child nickname, for hitting the cushion and getting up there and just banging it and running the car to all hell. And now you get the opportunity. Your dad has you know climbed into that um, the seventeen car, and you get the opportunity to travel up and down the road a little bit with him. What's that meant to you to have dad out there with you and not just, you know, in your pit? Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, it's something that we've kind of dreamed of and, and didn't really know how we would make it happen. Um, you know, it's getting tougher to be able to run the outlaws. And, uh, you know, I just kind of jumped out and, and took a chance on myself and did it. And, uh, you know, the next thought was how do we get my dad out here? And, and uh, when the 17 car opened up for him, it, uh, it was exciting, so uh, definitely having a lot of fun out here with him. Now, Sheldon, um, it, you were kind of a late arrival to the Outlaws. You know, it was a couple weeks before the season there. Yeah, announced that you're going to be running the World of Outlaws. Why did you chose to go out with the Outlaws instead of going back with the Arctic at All Star Circuit of Champions? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I just didn't really want to stall out. Uh, you know, getting stuck racing around home, and and uh, you know, I'm doing this for a living, so. Uh, I felt like it was time to make the move, and, and um, you know, I didn't have any offers to go on the road, so I uh, kind of got a plan together to, to do it myself, and, and um, you know, luckily I had a lot of great partners that were on board to do that with me, so um, it was just kind of last minute, and, you know, we kind of knew, but we didn't say anything just uh, to make sure we'd be there in Florida and, um, you know, be able to do it the right way, so um, I'm excited that we asked. Now, you know, you've had a great year. You've had some success, and you're coming in here to Pennsylvania for the second time this season. Now, you're not a stranger to Pennsylvania. I know a few years back, as a real young kid, you came in here and ran um, the Claire Wintermeyer, the number three car there, for a hot second. What was that experience like as a young kid? And, you know, how do you transition that over now as a – I mean, you're not a veteran, but you're a little bit older. You've got some more experience. You've got some more seat time. You know, what are you looking forward to here in Pennsylvania, and what do you, what did you like about that time here before? Uh, yeah, definitely. I can't thank the winter miners enough for, for getting my feet wet in uh, Pennsylvania. And, uh, you know, just growing a bond with them, too. You know, I'm staying at their house right now, and um, they've been really nice to me over the, the last, uh, you know, I think it was 2011 since I ran their car. So um, just great to stay friends with people like that and, and have connections uh, over here in Pennsylvania, too. So. Um, that's fine. Considering uh, getting laps at Williams Grove, uh, that was huge for me to be able to come over here when I was 17, 18 years old and, and get laps against these guys and, and at these uh, tracks that are definitely a little different. Different from absolutely from what you're used to. All right, Sheldon, it's time to talk trash, buddy. Here we go. No, I'm kidding. You're a hell of a great guy. You're in the pot. Um, are you excited to get back to the Grove? I mean, you did uh, so so for your first time here back in Bay, but now you know it is the Champion Racing Orioles Summer Nationals. Two nights of racing. You feel confident that you got some um, uh, more laps under your helmet here uh, at the Grove? Yeah, definitely. I think uh, we just got to get through these first half of the night. And and start up front with these guys, and, um, you know, I don't see any reason why we can't win at the at the Grove. So uh, definitely excited and uh, always look forward to coming here just because how different it is. And, and uh, when there's a lot of money on the line, it makes it uh, exciting too. Absolutely. You know, your dad has won here before. And, and if you would get the W either tomorrow or Saturday night, how would that, uh, you know, feel to you, bud? Uh, it would be huge, you know. Uh, just a... Uh, I'd like to win a local race at the Grove, let alone an outlaw race. So um, I think a lot of people feel that way. Uh, it's def definitely a difficult place to win. So um, if we could get a, my first outlaw win and, and win at Williams Grove, it would be huge for our team. 
Not to mention, we love racing T-shirts out here, too. So, obviously, bring your shirts out here because you know us Pennsylvania fans. We love our racing T-shirts. Yeah, that's huge. Uh, actually, all mine will be at uh, Darren Pittman's T-shirt trailer. So, nice. we've been sharing a, a T-shirt trailer all year with him. So, I uh, can't thank uh, Darren and Mandy enough for letting us do that. And, and uh, you know, just trying to get my name out there all over the country. So, that's been huge for us, too. We can't, we can't stop ourselves, can we? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Sheldon, um, you've been through uh, the, pretty much the tra- all the tracks you're going to see this year uh, pretty much once here. Has there been a track that stuck out to you so far in your rookie season here in the World of Outlaws? Well, I don't know. Uh, a lot of them that we go to, uh, I've been to before. But, um, you know, I have a couple favorite tracks all over the country. I like Tulare out in California. And uh, Knoxville is always fun to get to. But... Uh, we went to some pretty cool tracks in Texas. So, um, you know, I don't really have a single favorite track. I, I try to make every track that I'm going to that night my favorite. So, uh, you know, we can try and be the best that night. But um, definitely our season's long, and we get to go to a lot of good tracks. So that's good. Now, I'm sure I, – I know you knew it was going to be tough. I mean, first year out in the tour, you're a rookie – you know, you and Bonsai, you guys are doing your thing. You've got some great sponsors on board. What has been maybe, say, the biggest eye-opener for you about the world of outlaws and traveling up and down the road? Uh, I don't know. It's just uh, a lot of driving, really. But um, <laughs> we get a lot of racing in. So uh, owning your own team, if you're driving, you better be racing to pay the bills. So um, luckily the outlaws do that. So. Uh, that's the only place I'd want to be. There's no real eye opener, you know. My dad's done it for a long time, and we pretty much knew what to expect going in. Uh, uh, just a little different when when you're paying the bills. So um, you just gotta uh, fund your racing the right way, and and I think uh, a lot of people could do it. They don't realize it, but um, yeah, just excited that we're out here. He is proof of that, too, that you can do that. Uh, Sheldon, now, one thing that is an eye-opener for, I think, a lot of people has been the format with the World of Outlaws across sprint cars this year is that it seems like you got to go out there and time well each night in order for um, for you to have a good night here. And it seemed like you really found a lot here on um, Tuesday night at Lernerville. What is your thoughts on the current format of the World of Outlaws across the sprint car series has? Uh, me, personally, I like the format. Um I mean, you got to be fast all night, and, and uh, you know, the best guys in the country, uh, they should be fast all night. So, um, you know, I wouldn't change it, I don't think, and, um, yeah, I like it. So, uh, I don't really have any complaints about the format, and, and I think the best guy wins every night. Well, lastly, I got one more question for you here before we, you know, let you get out of here, but, um, there's every year there's some silly season that goes on. There's some rides that open up. And obviously, you know, it started early this year with the 17 car and your dad getting that opportunity. I know you've got to be very proud that you're doing this on your own, but if if the right opportunity fell into your lap next year and a, you know, one of these big owners came to you and said, "Sheldon, we want to put you in a car." Is that something that you're striving for or do you are you are you going to try to make this work on your own here for a while and just see how far you can take it? Uh, it just depends, really. Um, you know, obviously, I would like to have a ride where I didn't have to worry about the bills and stuff like that. But um, on the other hand, I get to control what I do and, and when I want to do it and who I want to work with. So, um, you know, there's definitely positives and negatives to both. So, um, you know, definitely a ride not out of the picture would be great uh, under the right circumstances. So, um you know, just got to communicate with people and, and see what's going on and and how people want to work with you. So, um, you know, I'm happy either way. I know I can do it on my own now, but um, at some point I need to be able to try and make a little bit of money instead of just uh, spend it up all my race cars. So um, definitely a goal to, to be able to drive for someone at some point. Real quick, Sheldon, before we let you go, dude, we do have a question here in the Fully Injected Motorsports Fan Zone uh, from one of our fans, Robin A. Kramer, and he wants to know, how do you feel racing against your dad? Uh, it's awesome, actually. Uh, we got to start on, on the second row of the Kings Royal and um, together, so I don't think it gets much better than that being in the four-wide picture at uh, Kings Royal. So, uh, you know, that was a blast, and let alone getting the 
race with him every week. So, um, you know, I love it. Just getting to the races and, and pitting by my dad is uh, something not a lot of people get to do. So uh, definitely exciting. Uh, absolutely. It was a blast watching you guys uh, race against each other out at the Kings Royal last year, or this past weekend. Uh, real quick, you definitely have some great marketing partners uh, on your car that help you get up and down the road uh, each and every weekend. Uh, yeah, definitely. I wouldn't be able to do it without uh, Larry and Jennifer at Southern Pacific Farms. Uh, uh, Rico has been a big part of my team this year. and uh, you know, I wouldn't be able to do it without those two people and, and a lot of other great sponsors. So, um, you know, very fortunate to have great partners to do this with. Awesome. Sheldon, keep up the great work, bud. I mean, a lot of people don't know that this is your own operation. You bought your own hauler this past winter. I mean, this is 100% your own operation. The way you're going, I wouldn't uh, doubt it that you would pick up a win this weekend at Williams Grove. Good luck, my friend, and I can't wait to catch up with you. Yep, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Sheldon Hanachow just joining us here on PA Sprint Car Live. I mean, so many fans were pulling for him to get his first win this past Tuesday night. Oh, I was. I mean, that was – it looked like his father through and through out there beating that right rear off the cushion. I mean, he was he was gone out there. But shots being shots, reeled him in. But, man, I tell you what, he is his father through and through. He is definitely going to be a legend in this sport. You know what? He is his father. He looks like his dad. He <laughs> talks like his dad. And he races like his dad. And I wouldn't have it any other way for a guy out there just banging off the wall, banging off the curb, going for the win. I tell you what, I, I, you know, I remember as a kid, uh, you know, such, such great glory days of, of sprint car racing. But you, you, I don't think you can – you can't really. In the last four decades, you can't pick a decade in where you don't have a Jack Hodenshaw memory. And I remember, you know, that, that Pennzoil 22 just every night, you know, it seemed like he was either going to wreck it or checker it. And, you know, I remember, you know, that, that video that goes the rounds at least once a year of Jack going to the rear and coming up. The front and, row and challenge. The front row challenge yeah. and winning the thing and the place going nuts. And yeah. I think – um. You know what I, I do. We're gonna see Sheldon's gonna win some races. He, he's gonna win a lot of races. And um, <laughs> the guy that I feel the worst for is probably Brent Marks, who went out there as a rookie, and you know a week later Sheldon comes out and it's like, damn, now we <laughs> got to go up against this kid every night for this award. So, right. man, um, great season so far. I think the second half it's not gonna be surprising people because I think everyone expects it, but I see big things for that team and. Um, I'm looking forward to the future. Absolutely. It's going to be a great night. In doing the research for this year, too, this is where Sheldon's excelled in from Brent. They have just about the same amount of top tens, but those seven top fives to Mark's zero is what's winning Sheldon Hanshield, or Sheldon Hanshield the Kevin Goldberg uh, Rookie of the Year. It all comes down to time trials. Yes. That's what it mm -hmm. does. But Brent Marks is no slouch either. Well, race fans, next up we're going to have Darren Pittman. Hey, race fans, this is Blake Anderson, the voice of the Arctic Cat All-Star Circuit of Champions, and you're watching PA Sprint Car Live on Beer Hill Gang TV. Hi, this is Lucas Wolf. Thank you for tuning in to Beer Hill Gang TV. All right, race fans, he's the driver of the Great Clips number nine. However, this a uh, month, I will say. He's the driver of the Shark Week, number nine. Darren Pittman joins us right here on PA Sprint Car Live. Darren, thank you for taking some time. From what I hear, you're very busy, so we're going to keep this short. But thank you for joining us. No, it's all good. Uh, finally all finished up. I was busier than I wanted to be, but it's uh, life on the road. Since the last couple of days down in Hanover, uh, drove straight from Learnerville there and uh, – Got some good friends of mine, Lance Donaldson and his son Scott. They uh, have been working on my motorhome from uh, Diesel Pro and found a lot more problems than I thought we had. So we've been uh, uh, working on it the last uh, day and a half, uh, trying to get it fixed up and uh, ready to make uh, our West Coast swing and uh, hopefully make it through the rest of the year. So uh, I got it all fixed up and just pulled into the track here at Williams Grove. So uh, excited to get on this weekend. I hope these are the only problems you have, my friend, because you are very strong at the Grove. I would not be surprised if you lay down a good time trial lap and you get the win this Friday or a Saturday night. Well, that's the plan. I'm always uh, excited to come here and always, uh, you know, always really look forward to coming to Williams Grove. It's one of my favorite tracks and one I come to uh, with the most confidence, but uh, uh, we've been struggling this year, just uh, haven't been able to find Victor Lane yet at all, and, and uh, struggling just to find 
any consistency out of our car and with much speed. But uh, I feel like we're um, maybe headed down at least somewhat down the right path. I think we still got a little ways to go. But uh, we've been a lot better the last couple of weeks, and uh, hopefully we can uh, try to break through and uh, get a win this weekend. It uh, wouldn't surprise me at all, and uh, hopefully uh, we can do that. You are getting faster and faster uh, the last couple of weeks, which is good to see. For you race fans that are just joining us here on PA Sprint Car Live, we have the driver of the Shark Week, number nine, Darren Pittman, joining us. If you have any questions for Darren, make sure you put them in the fully injected motorsports fan zone. That is the comment section below, and we'll make sure we ask Darren. Now, Darren, obviously, you know, everybody knows you know, here in Pennsylvania, you came in here, you ran some races for the, um, a couple of different car owners. You had a lot of success with Mike Hefner. Tell us a little bit about what that stretch of your career has meant for you as a sprint car driver. I know you came in here and you didn't have a lot of options at the time. You know, you, you're coming off the tour, and I'm sure Pennsylvania was probably the farthest place you thought you were going to end up at. How was that for your career, and what was that experience like in PA? Yeah, it was uh, it was challenging, you know. Um, I think you have to be adaptable, and you're right. I, I don't think I ever, uh, you know, I, I kind of got on the Outlaw Tour pretty young, uh, so I can't say that I ever thought I'd be racing, um, you know, in Pennsylvania for a season, uh, let alone four, uh, which what it turned out to be. But uh, it was really a good experience for me. It really helped me, um, I guess, appreciate the opportunities that I had. And, um, you know, appreciate the ones that I was given while I was in Pennsylvania as well, uh, that man, good rides are hard to come by. You got to take care of them and, uh, good owners are tough. So it's, uh, it was a lot of fun. It made me a lot better at racetracks. I think that are important on the uh, outlaw schedule. If you're ever going to, you know, win a championship. Um, so, and, and there were tracks that I, I always ran pretty well on. I think I, um, you know, even before I came to Pennsylvania, I thought I was always pretty decent at the Grove and had won a couple of races here uh, before that. But uh, it's tough, you know. I mean, it definitely keeps you outlaw sharp, you know, racing here every week. And uh, it's not any easier here than it is out on the road. So it's uh, definitely a challenge. And, and as a driver, I think uh, it keeps you as, as prepared as ever um, when you do get a chance to go back to race with the outlaws full time that, that you're ready. Darren, would you credit that time you had here in Pennsylvania um, for your um, for uh, for your 2013 World of Outlaw Cross Spring Card uh, Series Championship? Well, I don't know if I can, you know, credit those four years on it, but you know, we we raced six times at Williams Grove, and we raced, uh, you know, I think that year I'm not even sure we raced at Port Royal that season, so maybe one or two races at Lincoln. So, you know, it's hard to base eight races off of a whole season. We were really good uh, the whole time, uh, pretty much uh, all the way across the country. But, um, you know, Williams Grove was a place that even if guys have been able to run with Donnie or, say, somewhat stay with him, Pennsylvania is a place that he always separates himself. You know, he's been dominant here and always consistently running well here for years. So, um you know, it's definitely a place that uh, we, we go to a lot of tracks that they don't race weekly. It's, um, you know, if, if he, if somebody beats you by, say, three or four positions, that's pretty big. Well, it's only, you know, six or eight points. You come here to Pennsylvania, as tough as it is, that's your chance to really make up ground and, and put some distance between yourself or lose some ground uh, for a guy that you're racing with in points because, you know, it's easy to come in here and run 15th or 16th and another guy, you know, win or run second and third. And, you don't find that at a lot of the racetracks that we go to throughout the country that you find that much of a point separation from a, uh, from one racetrack or one region, uh, like you do in Pennsylvania. So we were solid. I don't know if we beat Donnie at every PA race that year or not, but I know, uh, we were top three and, and, uh, ran really well at every, you know, every time we came to Williams Grove that, uh, we at least, uh, probably didn't lose points to him on the Pennsylvania swings. if not, you know, game some, which nobody's been able to do on him for a while. Now, I asked Greg Hodden at the same question earlier in the season, you know, because he came in here to Pennsylvania and he's, he's, he's stayed, you know, he's had a great time. We all know about the rivalry between the World of Outlaws and the Pennsylvania Posse. As a driver who's experienced both sides of that, 
how how serious do you drivers take that? Is it is it just another? Are they just words, or is, is there some real bragging rights when you're a Pennsylvania guy and you beat the Outlaws, or you're an Outlaw and you come in and beat the Pennsylvania Posse? Uh, in, in my opinion, it's probably not the popular or fun answer. Uh, it means nothing to me, and, and I don't mean that. But I, I think the rivalry is awesome. I think it, it's a lot of fun to come in here and race because of the rivalry, but to me, the rivalry is for the fans. You know, that's, that's what it's all about is for them guys to – to cheer on that they hate us or they love their policy, you know, one way or the other. So from a driver standpoint, I don't care if I win here on Saturday night beating Donnie or if I beat Greg on it. Uh, I want to beat whoever I'm racing. Um, whoever I can, it doesn't matter who it is you're beating. You know, they're really good that night. And so, uh, you want to beat everybody as a driver and competitor that's on the racetrack. It doesn't make you any, it doesn't make me any difference where that car is based out of. Uh, but the rivalry is just a lot of fun for the fans. And, and we, we know about it, and, you know, it, uh, maybe in the, it adds to the atmosphere and um, adds to winning, and, and it adds to getting beat, you know, really bad. But at the end of the day, as, as drivers of, and competitors, we just want to know that we were the best that night, um, whether or not it's outlaws or fault either one. A good answer, uh, Darren. I most definitely agree with you. I think you know the fans uh, do buy into it. They blow it out of proportion sometimes. But talking to you, uh, you know, your drivers, your crews, you know, it's just another race you're trying to win. Uh, no harm, no foul if you do win or if you uh, don't win at all. Now, looking down the road, uh, you guys have some off weeks coming up. I think the Tuscaloosa 50 weekend is an off week for you guys. I could be wrong, but obviously that pays $50,000 a year. Is there a possibility that this KKR team will roll into the Speed Palace? I have no idea. That is the first I've heard of that, but I will look into it after what you just told me. I can Let's promise you out. that. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know when it is. And uh, When you say off week, I'm trying to figure out where in the world do we have an off week. But um, nope. yeah, I don't know. I'll, I can promise you uh, I'll look into it, and if it's a possibility that I can make it uh, for fifty thousand dollars, I have one race this year. I need some money, so uh, I'd love to uh, come and at least t- attempt to it. Uh, but uh, I'm not sure uh, what those dates are um, offhand, and um, I can promise you. Know, when the interview's over, I'll be Googling it. <laughs> well, I, I tell you what, Darren, we just actually looked into it. So you'll be racing at Port Royal in spirit. However, you're physically going to be racing out in California for the Gold Cup. So. And you book it in from Chico, oh. Darren. <laughs> so, so. There's a three-hour difference, <laughs> bud. <laughs> so uh, there you, you go, Darren. You, you got me a little excited. I'm trying to figure out when in the world we have an off week. I didn't think we had any until the end of the season. So unless the uh, score of 50 was on a Wednesday, I thought, well, maybe it's possible. But uh, uh, you, you never know. Well, well, we, well, I tell you what, we'll still stay on uh, Port Royal Speedway. You guys do have a race there uh, in October. And, man, what about Steve O'Neill and the gang? Definitely making that a premier facility in the country. Yeah, it's uh, really neat to see what they've done. And, and truthfully, in my time in Pennsylvania, that was really my least favorite track to go race. And every car owner that I drove for here, man, that was their favorite. I mean, Pete Posipak loved Port Royal. Uh, Mike Hefner loved Port Royal. Jesse Keen loved Port Royal. And that was always their favorite, and I was—I never enjoyed going there. I just was never very good. I've never felt—I've never felt comfortable there. And uh, really, ever since I left, I've actually been really good. Um, hadn't won an outlaw show there, but I think we finished second or third in almost every one of them that we've competed in since the outlaw started going there in the fall. And it's really a lot of fun to see. I, I really like Steve and um, Steve Steinle and everybody that's working that's with that whole promotional and and track crew um they've done a great job there and it's it's neat to see the effort and uh the improvements that have gone on to a track that when i first came here it didn't look like anything that happened to it for 20 years so um it's it's gotten improved a lot the racing's gotten a lot better and uh i'm becoming more and more comfortable there at a track that was really one of my worst tracks i think uh in the Pennsylvania area, I was Williams Grove was one of my favorites, and Sealand's Grove was uh, kind of a close second. I always enjoyed going there, uh, but uh, it, it is fun to watch promoters put in as much effort as the race teams. You, you know, we feel like we work really hard day in day out to make our cars better and figure out how to get better to beat people. 
and then you go to tracks and you just don't see much change at all. So it's really fun, I think, as a competitor to show up and see that the racetracks are putting out as much effort as we feel like we do on our race teams. Now, you have been in the Pennsylvania quite a few times. Uh, you were here this year earlier. You had some success earlier. But this week you come in, the car looks a little different. You know, we, we shared on our, our website, we had a photo of you in the Shark Week race car. Tell us a little bit about the Shark Week deal and what that means to you. To, I mean, that's a pretty big deal in, in the United States, Shark Week. People freak out about that. Yeah, it's uh, man, uh, I'll be honest with you. I'm learning how big of a deal it was uh, after we added it. It's, uh, you know, obviously I, I've watched some of the programming in the past, but, uh, yeah, that's um, Discovery Channel's, I guess, most popular week on TV. is, is And from a rating standpoint, is Shark Week. And uh, Great Clips has had a an arrangement with them for probably the last three or four years um, uh, as a co-promotion between the the two companies, between Discovery Channel and Great Clips. And uh, Casey's ran a uh, Shark Week car for, I think, the last three or four seasons on his cup car. He's running it again uh, this year as well here, I think, in the next week or two. Um, they're running it on Clay Milliken's dra- uh, top fuel car as well. So the car turned out really cool. It's, it's fun that it's a... Uh, you know, a nationally recognized week um, on TV that a lot of people tune in um, and watch, um, you know, a channel that maybe isn't something they, you know, watch all year long. So uh, it's been a lot of fun to promote it and uh, just see the fans' reactions and uh, see, um, you know, how excited they are to, to see the car and, and, and hear people's stories about how much they look forward to uh, Shark Week, you know, all, all year long uh, watching it on TV. So uh, it's actually it's been a really cool promo. Uh, the great clips have been involved with, and uh, I'm glad we're able to do it. To be honest, with you, I can't wait to actually take pictures of that car this weekend. It looks phenomenal. But yeah, it's really <laughs> cool to see Discovery Channel and them actually reaching out and go into the sprint car side and going to um, going into NASCAR or well, pretty much motorsports side in general. What's that mean, like as a driver standpoint, to have that kind of sponsorship from a national, um, uh, well, a TV provider like Discovery Channel? Yeah, I mean, I think anytime you can. Um, link something that um, you're not diehard sprint car fans recognize, you know, that you can bring that to, uh, you know, a mainstream uh, sponsor, TV channel, TV show, something like that, to um, sprint car racing is good. I mean, it's only good for exposure for us and uh, for the sport in general and, and uh, you know, for the fans itself. So, it's it's been it's been really cool to have them involved and like I said, Great Clips is a really big company and and uh, um, you know they're great to be able to, to support them and and to represent them across the country. But like I said, when you tie the two together and and the cross promotion that they've come up with, um, I think it just really works um, well for for both companies. It, it sure does, and it's a great fit for KKR. Well, Darren, we're going to let you get going, buddy. Uh, good luck this weekend. I got a feeling that we're going to talk to you on the front stretch, my man. So you're getting momentum. Good luck, and I can't wait to catch up with you. I hope you're right. So uh, we'll look forward to it. I'm excited to race here regardless. But, uh, man, it would be no better way than to uh, try to get our season uh turned around here a little bit if, uh, with a win at uh, Williams Grove, and uh, hopefully that'd be on Saturday night if we got to pick one of them. So a, little bit, a lot of money on the line, and uh, always look forward to the challenge. Well, hey, if you know if, uh, you know if something good happens this weekend, you know if you see one of the three of us here, you know something great's got to happen. <laughs> yeah. Sounds good, man. Look forward to it. Thanks, Aaron. Yeah, thanks, guys. Darren Pittman just joining us here on PA Sprint Car Live, and I mean, don't be surprised. He's been real fast at the Grove the last couple of seasons. He was real fast here in May, and it was a great race between him and Lance for the Summer Nationals last year, so don't be surprised if that black number nine uh, makes it into victory lane. It's not black anymore. It's blue. Sorry, it blue. Is, it's my, it's, it's Shark, Shark Week, bro. Oh! Shark Week. But, um, no, for real, um, it's pretty cool. I, I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. I think, um, you know, I remember watching Darren Pittman in the Gum Out series Back in the day, yeah. Wayne's Grove. Yeah, and it thinking, used to be in the blue number and, three. And three and yeah, the blue yeah, 21. Yeah, yeah. I have a I, shirt. I, remember, I gotta find I that. Remember, I was in the World of Outlaws game, too. I remember too. thinking, um, you know, this this kid's got some talent. And I remember when he came into Pennsylvania. Honestly, I forgot he was in that Pete Poster Pack number 25 car. Yeah. I, for, I only remembered the Keen car and the, um, and the Hefner car. 27, yeah. But, man, he, he made a, quite the impression on me as a fan coming in here to PA. He never... Um, I mean, he came. He he won the Kings Royal. Um, he won some big races out in the World of Outlaws Tour. 
And he didn't look at this as a demotion. You know, it was what it was. Everyone knew, like, he didn't have a ride. Well, PA it is, I guess. So I always appreciated him coming in here and having a, you know, he gave it his all, and he gave the fans a lot. I mean, there was a lot of wins for that team, especially with the Hefner 27 when he was in here. And um, honestly, I was sad to see him go back out, but uh, we all knew that's what I think the intention was. And he got that opportunity with Casey Kane. He took advantage of it, won himself a championship. And I think one of my favorite things is um, – you ever what I'm on the it was like do it yourself channel or whatever they have one of them shows where they like redo houses and they redo yeah. yards, mm -hmm. and I guess the it was out in Vegas and it was sponsored by Great Clips and I remember watching it, and Darren Pittman pulls into the backyard in the sprint car, and he gets out and the guy's like, the guy apparently really liked racing, uh, that's why they were, there was a racing themed backyard and they were like, do you know who this is? And he just kind of looked and was like. And he looked at his driver's suit and it just says Pittman. And he's like, Pittman! <laughs> and I was like, man, that just tells you what a sponsor like Great Clips can do for the World of Outlaws yeah. for sprint car drivers. And it, it takes them to a level that they're, they're not normally at. Right. Yeah. And Darren, as you said, um, so good here in Pennsylvania. But yeah, he's also one of the good guys in the pits. You know, always in there for the fans. Talk to him. No matter he's in, whether it was Outlaw or a, um, a posse member, one of the great guys to be around. And I think he's got a chance to turn around this weekend. Yeah, he sure does, and uh, he finished in the top five at the Don Bolton. Martin. And, yep. And we talk about spouses too. I got to thank uh, Mandy, mm -hmm. his wife. She's the one that got us this interview with uh, with Darren. And got us in touch with him, and I know she spends a lot of time in the trailers, um, you know, selling T-shirts and doing that for him. And you know, just a quick reminder, but you know, we've talked about it with. Uh, I know uh, Sheldon's mom does a lot of work. Yeah. In the trailer. These guys wouldn't be where they are without the spouses, and uh, that's a pretty, you know, it just says a lot about it. It's a, it really is a family deal up and down the road with these guys, and that's and, appreciated. And T-shirts. Absolutely, but I got to do it one more time. Shark Week, pow! I got to do it. I had to do it. Did we just become best friends? We, we, we just became best friends, bro. <laughs> Why are you sweating? Cops come on to four. Uh, anyway, uh, all eyes will turn to Williams Grove Speedway tomorrow and Saturday for the Champion Racing Oil Summer and Nationals. This is where we preview the weekend, ladies and gentlemen. And tomorrow night, it's going to be beautiful out. Normally, the track is a little heavier compared to Saturday. Uh, the track was uh, good all season so far. But, Bert, I will let you take the duties for this. I guess I'm asking who's got the uh, – who? Wait, we, wait, before we uh -oh. do that. We did mention, we did run the pace performance thing. Oh, earlier. my God. The pace performance driver of the week, I believe, was Glendon Forsythe, which was a big, yeah. I don't want to say a shocker. I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe people just got tired of seeing Lance and Lucas winning this damn thing every week. <laughs> but um, congrats to that team. Once again, we mentioned them winning the race, and uh, we got to thank Pace Performance for putting that on for us. Uh, driver of the week, Glendon Forsyth. That's a big deal. Um, yeah, you know, for a little team like that, even though we don't have anything to give them, I think that's a big deal. Yeah, um, no deal. It's nice to see them get some exposure. And um, before we end, I wanted to put this in there. Um, you know, last time we did a show, yes, we did the uh, little deal in the beginning for William and his family. Yes, um, he unfortunately did pass away this past week after a very very brave fight with um, leukemia. It was very very sad. Um, I know I got a chance. I know, Bert, you did too out of Steelings Grove. We got a chance to talk to the family, to the dad, and he said how appreciative he was of what, you know, what we've been able to do. And um, they are going to have a benefit. It's uh, August 15th at um, Quaker Stick and Lube, Mechanicsburg. I uh, put on my Steve Wilbur and um, uh, Creasy. I can't think of the first name. Uh, so one of the Creasy's. <laughs> um, but they're putting this event on. They're going to, you know, the money's going to go to the family. They're going to have an auction. We are going to donate our, uh, our first banner. That we had made that we don't use anymore. We're gonna have get get it signed this weekend for all the drivers. And uh, I encourage all of you if you have any collectibles you don't need, uh, if your drivers you're watching, um, the family could really use a pick me up. And I know the racing family has been there for them the whole yes. time, and uh, we're proud to be a part of that. But um, you know we're sorry for your guys' loss. Uh, unfortunately, we never got to meet William himself, but uh, he's here in spirit. And uh, yeah. We want to get that out real quick. Absolutely. So, race fans, if you're tuning in right here, make sure you show some love to that family. Give them some hearts right here in the Fully Injected Motorsports Fan Zone. But, Bert, take it away. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will kick it off tomorrow night at the Williams Coast Speedway for the World of Outlaw Crash and Spring Car Series, the Champion Race Rules at Summer Nationals. Night number one, 25 laps, 8,000 wins. Yes, sir! Boys, what do we think? Who's got the hot shoe tomorrow night? We'll start with uh, Justin Snyder. He almost forgot your name there. I you know, I, I hate you put me on the spot to begin there. Uh, <laughs> wake up, Justin. Yeah, but, come uh, on. No, um, you know, it's tough. Uh, 
Anytime the Outlaws come in, you, it's a crapshoot. It's a crapshoot on a, on a regular <laughs> sure night, is. honestly. You don't sure know is. who's going to win. You got your favorites. I would love to see one of our locals win, obviously. Um, Donnie Schatz, he's, it's a month of money. I mean, he's here. Yeah. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a couple guesses here. Uh, yeah, go ahead. No, it's Friday night. Uh, we got Saturday yet, too. I think uh, I don't know if he's coming or not, but one of the guys who I think has been, in my mind, I'm a little under the radar, maybe the story of the year for me, Tim Schaefer. He can't, I, he's been in that. here for PA multiple times. Absolutely. Been on the podium just about every time he's been here. He went out. He ran really well at the Brad Doty race. He led a lot of laps out there. Yeah. If Tim Schaefer's here, I don't count him out. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go against the grain here. I'm going to pick something that's probably not very popular, but I think that Articat number 15 is going to be in victory lane. Uh, yeah. He's going he's gonna to win one of the nights. But I don't think King Donnie is going to win Friday night. Tomorrow, uh, normally the track is a little heavier. Uh, normally the track is a little heavier compared to Saturday night. Right. It's still both racy. It doesn't matter. There, like Justin said, there's a crapshoot with cars. I mean, Lucas Wolf is on fire. Don't count out Lance Deweese. Don't count out Danny Dietrich. With Greg Hodnett switching from triple X's to Maxim, mm -hmm. he's, uh, he could be a contender. Brock Zierfoss, we mentioned him earlier. The, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. However, I will say, I mean, this is going to be an obvious uh, pick. I don't know. You know uh, what? I'm gonna, I'm it's gonna, not that obvious to you, well, apparently. No, no. I'm going to switch it up. I'm uh -huh. going to switch it up. I'm going to say that while we're throwing beers at each other, here, this is what <laughs> so we do with fans. Um, I'm going to say Danny Dietrich picks up the win tomorrow night. Oh, my God. You shocked me. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, he's on a roll. <laughs> yeah, he, he is. He's due. He, yeah. um, and, and he's due. He's due for a win at the Grove and the World of Outlaws. I agree. And, you know, he had that great run a couple of years ago on the, uh, against the World of Outlaws. Him and Shaw's 2015. That fantastic battle they had on yes. Friday night. Awesome. You know what? I like shots. I like Dietrich, or Dietrich to pick up a win sometime this weekend. But tomorrow night, I think the hottest driver in Pennsylvania will win, and that's going to be that NBA and Sun number 24 of Lucas Wolf. That run he had to get Greg Hodden on Sunday was great. Was really coming on strong Saturday night at Port Royal, but Lance Luis and them was just too strong. And I think Lucas Wolf picks up a win tomorrow night to open up the Champions Racing World Summer Nationals. So... So that leads into Saturday night then, I guess. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, it does. Back to the Williams Coast Speedway for the World of Outlaw Cross Sprint Car Series. Night number two of the Champion Race in the World. Summer Nationals, 30 laps, 20,000 a win. It is a Midsummer Classic here in Pennsylvania. Boys, who's got the hot shoe on Saturday night? Takes home the 20 bills. I think uh, it would be the biggest win of his entire career, I think. Um, but it's not a surprise. I think... Uh, Best driver at Williams Grove all season has been the Raymer brothers, Ooh. number 51. I'm going to go with Freddie Raymer Jr. to uh, shock the world and take home the money. Shock the world, he'll, and he'll probably do it from 10th. You watch. Uh, obvious choice. It's the month of money, $20,000 on the line. He kicked everybody's butt at the King's Royal. He won the Don Martin Memorial. King Donnie Schatz will take home the win. The last time Donnie Schatz won in Pennsylvania was actually the night before I lost my father. It was in 2015. He has not won since. I think that streak continues. And it will go to Danny Dietrich picks up the 20000 to win. I had to. I had to. I that told him. Yeah. Who saw that? Anyway. Saw that? That's but, a great pick. But, but, but great pick. don't count out. Little Freddie, the way he's been running this year, and also Lance with that run he's been having at Port Royal. They probably will transfer something over to that car there, but still, I think Dietrich's due. He hasn't won in a while. Give me Danny and, Dietrich and Winsgrove. I'm going gonna, gonna to throw something out here, too. I think um, let's ultimate sleeper pick. You know, we did say okay. how, how, how these have been uh, quite competitive. The, the fields are very full, very uh, hard to crack to get up there. One guy who's... Who did really well the last time the World of Outlaws came to Williams Grove and almost shocked a lot of people? TJ Stutz. Time oh, trials, car. He's, yeah. Fast in time trials. He gets up front. He gets out. He gets going, and he can manage the tires. He can do his thing. He's got Todd Schaefer, who knows a lot about beating and winning some good races. Don't be surprised if we see an upset. You know what? All right, I'll pick another upset. I mean, this shouldn't be an upset, but he's not having that great of a year, per se, especially to his standards. But Dale Blaney, he's due for a win. You know, you don't know what you're going to get. Uh, but I say Dale Blaney, he, picked up the, he takes home the checkered flag. How about a team that's been struggling this year with one win only? 
The Edge, Brian Monteith. What if they could turn that around this weekend? Somehow, some way, get that time trial effort going. Maybe pick up his first ever World of Outlaws win. You got to time well. Yes, you do. And you that's got the problem. to time well is the name of the game. One more, too. Sheldon Hanshield. Be on the watch for him. With that run at Lernerville on Tuesday night, he might have a shot to win it. Absolutely. Fans, I want to know from you, who do you think will take home the win tomorrow and Saturday night for the Champion Racing Oil Summer Nationals at uh, Williams Grove Speedway? Don't forget, um, I will be selling the National Open Rookie Award t-shirts up by the Bear Hill Gate, uh, the ticket gate, um, $20. I have yellow, gray, and black. Uh, from small to 4XL, make sure you get your official Beer Hill Gang National Open Rookie Award t-shirt. Don't forget, follow us here on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at Beer Hill Gang TV. Also, we have a YouTube page. Search for PA Sprint Car Live. And we also have a web page called PASprintCarLive.com. And also, we've got some brand new decals that we will have tomorrow. It's the new logo on our site. You'll see them. Check them out. Um, they're going to be $5. The, you know, we're gonna. All the proceeds are gonna go back into the sport, 100. percent We're not sure what we're gonna do with it yet, but um, come out, get your sticker, slap on the back of your shirt. I want every Put it on the cool, personality huh? in the goddamn country to know you're watching Beer Hill Gang TV. Absolutely, and, uh, make it happen. Uh, we'd love to meet everybody. So. All right, boys, enough talk. It's Summer Nationals weekend. Let's crack up a bit of cold one for, with the boys. Absolutely, ladies and gentlemen. That's Justin Snyder, Armor Holy Junior, Burt Wojcik, and Andy Milley behind the. Keyboards, wishing you all a good evening.